Panasonic offers advanced autofocus controls for video on the S series and select G series cameras. Let's take a look at how to use them. The first thing you have to know is how to put your camera into autofocus mode. Depending on the lens that you're using, there may be a physical switch on the lens itself. Or if you're using one of the Pro Series lenses, you may have what's called a focus clutch, which is where the actual focus ring pulls back, as you're seeing in this video here, to reveal manual focus mode. Push it forward again to go back into autofocus. Then on the camera itself, you have a switch to go from manual focus to continuous autofocus or single autofocus. One thing worth noting is that if any of these switches are set to manual focus, then the camera will be in manual focus. So if you have, for example, autofocus set on the back of the camera, yet the camera isn't autofocusing, check the lens. Make sure that its switch or focus clutch mechanism isn't set to manual. Let's dive into the autofocus modes and take a look at how all of these work. This is the autofocus mode menu. And as you can see here, we have a whole list of different options we can choose from. I'm going to start on the very right using something called pinpoint mode. Pinpoint is designed to give you a very precise area of focus, and this works only in single focus mode. This is designed for a locked shot, meaning the camera is on a tripod, and a locked subject, the subject isn't moving. This allows you to define an extremely precise point for the camera to focus on, and I can do that by moving the joystick around to assign the focus point. So for example, I'll set it right over the Lumix logo there. Then when I half press the shutter, it pops in to show me that it has achieved critical focus. You can also move the focus point with your finger by simply dragging it around the screen to focus on whatever you want to focus on. The next mode is single area autofocus. I'll go back into the autofocus mode and choose that. With single area autofocus up, I can choose the focus area by moving the joystick around or again by touching the screen and repositioning it. I can also change the size of the focus area by rotating the command dial or the wheel on the back to change that. This is telling the camera to only use that area to focus on. It ignores anything else happening outside of that box. This allows you to have very critical control over the area that the camera is focusing on, even in continuous autofocus. But there's more to it than this. If I go back into the AF mode and then push up on the command dial, you'll see that it cycles from one area to one area with human detection, or even one area with human and animal detection. This means that the camera will look for a human, or a human and an animal, outside of that focus box, outside of that single area. So while the camera will prioritize that center area, anything that's in that box, as soon as a human or animal enters the scene, anywhere in the scene, the camera will revert to focusing to them. As soon as the human or animal exits the scene, it will go back to looking at just that one box. Now there's an expansion on the one area called One Area Plus, and that's the next mode. As I cycle over to this, you'll see it says now one area plus, and once again, I have the human animal detection, or I can go back to straight one area, one area with human, or one area with human and animal. The difference between one area and one area plus is simply that the one area plus includes an expanded area just outside of the main box where your subject could go into. What this means is, let's say that you have a subject in the box in standard one area, and that moves out of the box. As soon as it moves out of the box, the camera's gonna focus on whatever is in that box. But with one area plus, as the subject moves out of the box within the expanded area, the camera will assume that you probably want to keep that in focus and hold on to it, as opposed to just giving up on it and focusing on just whatever's in the center. So it gives you a little bit more leeway with your autofocus. Now I shot some video earlier that I'm going to play back now to show you how this autofocus system works. And we're going to look at this specifically with one area plus and human autofocus detected. Let's take a look at these clips. Notice on this frame that there are a series of boxes. In the very center, just around her nose, we see a series of four corners. That is the one area. That is the one area focus that the camera is set to. But then outside of that box, you'll see another set of four corners. That is the expanded area or the one area plus. So any subject that goes into that one area and then moves out into that one area plus area will maintain focus. However, look at her face. Notice that there is a yellow box around her face and a crosshair over her eye. This indicates to us that the camera has detected a human and is locking on her face, making that the priority. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap play. And as the leaf is raised into that box, the camera focuses on that. And as you see there, the yellow box around her face has disappeared. As soon as she lowers the leaf out of frame, the camera detects her face and goes back to that. So that is how one area or one area plus with face detection works. Now let's move on through the other modes. The next mode is called the oval mode. And this one's pretty straightforward. It is simply a center weighted oval shaped area that the camera is going to use for focus. You can actually change the size of that focus area by moving the wheel on the back and reposition it using the command dial. 
The next mode is a zone mode, and this is a vertical or horizontal line mode. Within this mode, I can move the focus area up or down by pressing the command dial, or I can move it left or right by pressing left and right. And you'll notice that when I do go from left to right or up to down, that the line changes from vertical to horizontal. I can change the size of that line by moving this dial here as well. So you really have a lot of control over what area is gonna be focused on. Next, we'll go to the 225 area. And this is quite simply a fully automatic mode where the camera is going to look at almost the entire focus area broken down into 225 zones and automatically try to figure out what it is you wanna focus on. It's usually gonna be the closest subject, but it is going to basically try and figure out for you what it thinks you want to focus on. The next mode is a particularly interesting mode called tracking that allows you to lock onto a subject and track it as it moves around the frame. I don't have a moving subject in here to show you this on, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock it onto an object, this camera in front of me, and then move the object around. You'll see how it works. To start though, we do need to move into the creative movie mode. This does not work in the standard photo mode. Now we've been in photography mode this whole time, even though we're talking about video autofocus functions, because everything we've just talked about applies to both photo and video, specifically video when you press that top red button on your camera to start recording video. This mode, however, is unique to video focusing for the way we're gonna talk about it here. You can actually use it in still photography as well, but it works a bit differently, and we're gonna talk about that in another video. So let's get back into this. To activate this mode, go over to the autofocus tracking, push down on the command dial, which reveals the tracker, which I can move around with the joystick, position wherever I'd like, and then press the shutter halfway on the camera to lock onto a subject. Once it's locked, I can move that subject around, and the focus tracks it. You can also select your tracking subject by simply tapping on it on the screen. The next mode is human detection. You'll notice under the human detection that it's not just human, but it can also be human and animal detection. And this mode is probably the most versatile mode you'll find in the camera. It's kind of a combination of a variety of modes. First of all, let's focus on human detection. If there is a person, people, or animals in the scene, the camera will identify them and even allow you to lock onto an individual. I'll show you that in a moment. But if there's no people in the scene, then the camera reverts to a 225 area autofocus mode, meaning that it is looking at the entire scene for whatever it thinks should be in focus. You can also immediately switch into one area mode by simply moving the joystick to position the focus area wherever you want or touching the screen to define that area. As soon as you then tap on the autofocus off, it reverts back to 225 area, giving you the complete scene for it to focus on. Or again, if a person steps into frame, the camera will focus on them. So it really is the most versatile mode. Now let's take a look at a couple of video clips that I shot earlier showing how these different things work. In this scene, we have two subjects and the camera has identified both of them. You'll notice though that the subject on the right has a yellow box around her face with a crosshair over her eye. That's because she is the primary. The other subject has a white box around her as the secondary. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on play and now watch as the woman on the right walks forward, how the camera tracks and focuses her. And then as she walks back, it maintains focus on her. Now I'm gonna tap on the face of the woman on the left. The box has become yellow and it is now tracking her as she moves forward and then again as she moves back. This shows the versatility of the system where it can track multiple people at once, but then you as the camera operator can choose which subject you want the camera to focus on. The next thing I wanna show you is how even if the primary subject moves out of frame or is temporarily blocked by something else in the frame, the camera will wait a moment before reacquiring focus on another subject. And if that initial subject comes back into frame, the camera will try to reacquire them. Take a look at this. Here we have two subjects again, and the woman in the back is the primary. The yellow box is on her face. I'll tap on play, and as she moves behind the woman in front, you'll notice that she is lost, but then reacquired as she reemerges behind the first woman. The camera has intelligently identified her as the subject and waited for her to come back into the scene. That covers the autofocus modes that you're gonna find under the AF mode menu, but there's a lot more to the autofocus system than that. Let's take a look at the menu system. Into the menu, under the custom menu, navigate to the focus shutter page. You'll find on here a lot of options, and we are actually not gonna cover all of these in this video, there's just too many of them, but I encourage you to read the user guide for your camera to see which of these modes are in your model and which ones apply to you. But there is one function I want to look at, and that is right here, show or hide autofocus mode. This allows you to actually hide certain AF modes. So let's just say, for example, that you never use tracking. You can hide that, which means now when you go into the AF mode menu, tracking is no longer an option. 
it can be convenient sometimes to simplify the menu, removing modes that you never use. However, if I go back into this menu, there is actually an autofocus mode that is disabled by default, and that is custom. We have three custom modes, one, two, and three. I'll go ahead and turn one of these on, then go back into the autofocus menu, move over to C1 for custom one, and this is a mode where I can literally paint onto the LCD exactly what part of the scene I want it to focus on. I'll start by going into the save mode. You'll see here the save with the up arrow, go into that. And now I can either move that little crosshair around with the joystick and then click to define a focus area, or I can simply paint on the screen with my finger. I can draw in as much or as little of an area as I want, and I can even have them in different parts of the scene. So you can really build a very complex autofocus area just depending on your particular needs. Once you've defined that area, press Q to set it, and you can see on here with the yellow boxes showing me exactly what areas the camera is going to look for to focus on. I can even move that area around. If I go back into the AF mode and push down, I can now move that autofocus area that I had defined wherever I want in the scene. This allows you an incredible amount of customization of exactly where the camera is going to try to focus. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you in these menus. Go back into the menu and this time go up to the video mode. And then under focus, go to autofocus custom video settings. When you set this, you have two different choices. You have autofocus speed and autofocus sensitivity. Under AF speed, you'll see that the range is from slow to fast and sensitivity is from locked on to responsive. So what does this mean? Well, let's start with AF speed. The speed is quite literally the speed at which the camera will focus from point A to point B. Similar to if you were manually focusing the ring, would you turn it slowly or would you turn it quickly? If you want the camera to very quickly jump from A to B when it focuses, set it to fast. If you want it to move more slowly, more naturally, more gradually, you set it slower. Now, at what point does it decide to actually change focus? Well, that's where the next mode comes in, the sensitivity. Under sensitivity, you have locked on to responsive. If you're at locked on, what this means is that the camera, once it acquires focus, is going to hold onto that subject and not change focus because something else enters the scene. So let's say, for example, that you're filming a person and another person walks in front of them. Do you want the camera to quickly jump to focus on the person in front before jumping back to your subject? Probably not. So you're going to want that focus to remain more locked onto the primary subject. If you set the focus sensitivity to too responsive, then not only will the camera quickly try to refocus if something comes into scene, but even as a person naturally moves back and forth a little bit, the autofocus system will try to keep up with that and match that movement. So if you're filming a person who's standing talking like I am here, a locked on mode is going to be better than a responsive mode. However, let's just say that you're doing a demo on camera and you want to be able to pick up a subject, hold it up to the camera, have the camera focus on that, and then set it back down and have it refocus on you. In that situation, you probably want something more responsive. And again, you combine that with the AF speed to choose how quickly you want that focus to change. This does allow you a lot of flexibility in how your autofocus moves, so I encourage you to play with this and find a setting that works for your shooting style. So there you have it, a huge amount of control over the autofocus system in Lumix cameras. I encourage you to spend some time learning how these work, learning all the different nuances of them, and figuring out what works best for you. Panasonic.